you have about two and a half decades in, as a sports psychologist? Yes, yeah, about 35 years. 35 years. And the sports that you've covered, uh, hockey? And yeah, ice hockey, speed skating, aerial skiing, roller skiing, taekwondo, karate. Done a multitude of sports. And the percentage of sports that would benefit from the use of bio and neurofeedback, what do you think? They would all be. The key is integrating bio and neurofeedback reaction time into a yearly program that's uh, that's logical, rational, and uh, uses a variety of tools so that uh, athletes in the end, at the end point, uh, can be evaluated and, uh, and we are accountable for performance increases. So what we did with uh, the reaction time uh, is we, on the second monitor, we put a uh, picture of the uh, of the athletes on the line uh, in the Vancouver Pacific Coliseum uh, at a previous World Cup. We took that picture and uh, we combined that with crowd noise. Athletes saw the picture, we put them in the, in the situation that they would be at at the Olympic Games, and then we did all our reaction time training uh, using that image. And what that that did was uh, provided athletes with a sense of real time uh, what they would be facing on the start line uh, at the Olympic Games. Consequently, we we uh, we did go on and we got five medals: two gold, two silver, one bronze. And more importantly, we had 14 athletes that uh, were finalists at the Olympic Games. So we really think that uh, reaction time was. Uh, uh, how allowed our athletes to have a competitive advantage uh, for these Olympic Games. Not only that, the bio and neurofeedback that we've done in years previous uh, leading up to the Olympic Games uh, was also a significant advantage for our athletes that they used the, the breathing techniques, the no mind techniques, uh, to help them in terms of their warm up routines, their preparation before going on the ice for competition, the pre-start routine, the exchanges in the relay. All those skills were incorporated uh, into their planning and preparation for their individual performances. So in, in some neural and biofeedback reaction time are all tools that were integrated for our athletes uh, to help them uh, achieve peak performances in the Vancouver Olympic Games in 2010. You know, you showed me that scar and the fact that you didn't work out for a whole year, mm -hmm. but you did the mental side of, of, of the uh, exercises to, to keep yourself in the yeah, game. That, I, I didn't only do the mental side, I started to do it. Before that, I wasn't aware, I, didn't, I wasn't using that, and I just got, got more working on it, and it really helped me. It helped me to be more consistent and dealing with in Vancouver, the pressure and uh, the public, everything felt zero pressure. It was in the zone every race. We pulled out my best competition in the past year or two years. Every day in Vancouver, I've been using the reaction time to get ready for the 500 meter races every morning. Good.